Welcome to Know This Live. I'm Zinkley Esamwa. Joining me today is president of the Human Rights Campaign, Alfonso David. He is an LGBTQ plus civil rights lawyer and advocate and the first person of color to serve as president of HRC in the organization's nearly 40 year history. He has been at the forefront of the movement for LGBTQ plus equality for more than a decade and joins me now. Thank you so much for being here, Alfonso. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, and I know we're kicking off Pride Month halfway through 2021, and there have already been a record number of anti-trans bills that have been passed or proposed in many states across the country. So I also know that in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis just signed a bill that bans transgender Floridians from participating on sports teams for the gender of which they identify. What do you make uh, of this wave of bills targeting the community? I would say that our, our opponents understand that they're losing. They are desperate. They've lost battle after battle after battle against the LGBTQ community. Not too long ago, we saw bills that were being introduced, a rash of bills that would ban transgender people from using the restrooms consistent with their gender identity. Some people may remember we saw a rash of bills and constitutional amendments a few years ago to limit marriage to be between a man and a woman. Our opponents lost all of those arguments. They lost in court. They lost at the ballot box. And now they're targeting the most marginalized members of our community, transgender young people, and attempting to restrict their ability to actually participate in sports. They will lose this battle as well. Um, the Human Rights Campaign, in fact, has announced that we are going to be suing the state of Florida and Governor DeSantis for signing this piece of legislation that does nothing more than target transgender young people who are vulnerable and just simply want to participate in sports. Do you expect your lawsuit will be successful given the climate? Yes, I do. Um, you know, the U.S. Supreme Court issued a ruling last year where the court concluded that LGBTQ people are in fact protected under federal civil rights laws if those laws prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex. We know that we have federal civil rights laws that prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex that should apply to transgender people, and local elected officials are simply ignoring the law. They're also ignoring the Constitution. And so we plan to hold them accountable in court. And I know that it's not just athletics. You mentioned trans youth, and I know that Arkansas passed a law that would prohibit doctors from providing gender-affirming care to trans youth. What is at stake particularly for young people? Well, we should start with transgender young people attempt suicide at a rate four times that of their cisgender peers. We should also recognize that transgender young people suffer higher rates of anxiety, depression, and again, suicidal ideations. Bills that specifically restrict transgender people from receiving basic gender-affirming medical care is doing nothing more than exacerbating the problems that transgender people currently face. So we have medical association after medical association after medical association saying that these bills are not supported by science. They're, they're opposing these pieces of legislation. The American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association all say that there is value in providing gender affirming care to transgender people. So these elected officials who are advancing these anti-trans bills should understand that they are going to be directly responsible for perpetuating the anxiety, the depression, and the suicidal ideations that we've seen with transgender youth. And I know that in March, the House passed the Equality Act, which protects people from discrimination based on sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity. And the bill now awaits Senate approval. What do you make of the fact that these rights are still being fought for in 2021? And we also know um, that polls show anti-trans legislation is actually a low priority. So why do you think we're seeing so much opposition? Well, we're, I think we're seeing opposition here because those who oppose LGBTQ equality know that with each and every election, we gain more traction. Each and every election, we have more and more people who identify as equality voters. Those are folks who identify equality as a priority when they go to the ballot box. 
And so we have now more than 70% of the voters who support equality, who support non-discrimination protections for LGBTQ people. And anti-equality forces know the facts. They know that they're losing, which is why they force redistricting, which is why they advance voter suppression laws, which is why they they advance anti-trans laws. It's because they're trying to hold on to power. And they understand that the voters don't support their principles and certainly don't support their ideology. Uh, so we're going to continue fighting. The Equality Act is needed. In 29 states, we don't have comprehensive legal protections for LGBTQ people, and we need those protections on the federal level. And as you're talking about the opposition, I'm reminded that under the Trump administration, there were massive rollbacks of LGBTQ plus rights, like removing regulation that mandated health care as a civil right for transgender patients under the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. Biden has since reversed that legislation. But what is the HRC doing to ensure um, that such protections and rights aren't just rolled back when there's a new administration? Well, this is why the Equality Act is so important. Um, you know, the Affordable Care Act, as an example, basically said you can't discriminate on the basis of sex. And the, the agency that's responsible for enforcing the Affordable Care Act issued regulations. And those regulations effectively said you can't discriminate on, on the basis of sex and sexual orientation and gender identity because that is how sex is defined and has been interpreted. The Trump administration tried to reverse those regulations. We sued, the human rights campaign sued the Trump administration in court, and we won. We won a preliminary injunction that banned the Trump administration from implementing those regulations. What Trump did for four years is attempt to serve as not only the president, but he also served, tried to serve as the legislature. Presidents don't pass laws. They don't draft legislation. The legislature does. And Trump essentially tried to reverse what the Affordable Care Act means by issuing regulations to undermine it. So what we will continue doing is pushing for legislation that is inclusive, legislation that protects the LGBTQ community. So in the future, if we have an elected official who does not support the community, we will have our protections enshrined in statute. And outside of legislation, because it's clear that you have your hands full with that, I want to turn to another disturbing trend. This year alone, we know that at least 27 transgender or gender non-conforming people have been killed. Black and Latinx women are disproportionately affected. And I know a lot of activists speak out about this often. How do we combat this violence? First, we have to recognize that we all bring bias to the table. And we have to confront that bias by removing the blinders that we all live with. Transgender people in this country have been living with bias within the LGBTQ community as well as outside of it. And we all have a role to play to first acknowledge that bias and discrimination and indifference that the trans community has faced. And we have to play an active role in addressing it. And that means getting involved, actively involved in the fight for equality and liberation. It means supporting organizations that are fighting for equality. It means using your Twitter feed and your Instagram feed to elevate stories of members of the trans community. It means having the uncomfortable conversations with people who are misunderstanding or using or applying myths that are just simply not true about the trans community. There is so much that we can do individually to really transform our landscape and especially for pride, we need to elevate the voices of the trans community. And as we're talking about the nuances within the community, I'm reminded that uh, during Pride in New York this year, there was a lot of news and headlines around the fact that police officers won't be present or welcome. What do you make of that? And what does that say about the state of the community? Well, I, I mean, I think first uh, we have to acknowledge that the organizers of Pride get to decide and really determine how to organize their parade. So we have to acknowledge that. We also have to acknowledge, though, that the LGBTQ community has faced conflicts with police for decades, going as far back as Stonewall and Compton's Cafeteria, where Black and trans women basically fought against police brutality and, in, in fact, ignited the LGBTQ community and movement as we know it today. At the same time, though, we have to also acknowledge that there are LGBTQ police officers who have fought against discrimination to serve openly in police 
departments all across the country. I'm hoping that we can reconcile these issues so that our pride activities are inclusive while we engage in activism. And I wanted to end asking you about something we see often, which is that it's Pride Month. A lot of corporations and businesses are speaking out in support of the community, even though this is a bit new for them, even though this work has been uh, a long time coming. And you have been uh, a part of LGBTQ plus activism for so long. So I wonder for you, what does Pride Month and Pride mean to you and for you? Pride means activism for me. It is a celebration of our identity, but it is about remembering our history and activism and making sure that the press releases actually translate into meaningful change for our community. And corporations are supporting pride, corporations are supporting LGBTQ equality, but during this pride, we should hold all those who support pride accountable to make sure that they're showing up in spaces that we need them so that we can actually achieve liberation for our community. Alfonso David, president of the Human Rights Campaign, thank you so much for your time and thanks to everyone for watching. This has been Know This Live. Happy Pride. We'll see you next time.